Hey there guys, Power Guy here, and as you can help a video tell today, we're going to be reacting to Mandalorian Season 3 trailer, that shit seems hype as hell, I'm going to get into the intro, but first, right into the video, first, let's watch my intro, I get it, it's a screen recording, this is how I edit things, on the fly, this is how we work on my speed, okay, you know, I'll just shut up. Solid, there's no audio, because, you know, we don't think of things yet. That's the intro. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> so, Mandalorian. So, what do we know going in? So, we heard a lot about the stuff. Uh, last time we saw him, obviously, it was the finale with Luke Skywalker. He came back. He saved Grogu. We saw him teach Grogu inside the book of Boba Fett. And in a nice two episodes, uh, we saw the first episode where he got the ship. And we saw where he faced Grogu with the ultimatum. He didn't really present it. Luke did. Controversial part. Let's see what the fans say. I heard somewhere. Remember this that's giving Grogu a chance to pick the life for him. So it's really separate from what the Jedi Order did before. But it is an extreme of, hey, you cannot have connections or commitment. But that really is the main of their existence. The commitment that Anakin had to Padme was really like the breaking point. And Ahsoka being there to advise Luke was a very touching moment. So let's watch uh, the trailer. Okay, so uh, I watched Eric Voss's breakdown, so I should be a pro, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. We see a bunch of Mandalorian. Most of them do have the Night Owl-shaped helmet. Not exactly the paint. But these guys did make an appearance in the Clone Wars first, and then Star Wars Rebels. In the Clone Wars, they were a bit different. They were more Death Watch. We saw them slowly descend due to Maul's uh, unfair uh, reign over Mandalore after he killed Vizsla, took the Darksaber. But then uh, they rose up. What's the name? The Duchess' sister. And uh, yeah, so pretty much she led the Night Owls. The Death Watch became Maul's. I think they all came back at one point when Maul was gone. Thanks to the help of Ahsoka Tano when they pre-picked up the show. It's a lot of background, fuck. But we did see them in Rebels again, too. Ignore the swearing. Just pretend I didn't say that. Please do not demonetize me. I, like, this is going to get copyrighted. But uh, yeah, the Night Owls, huge origin behind them. The Mandalorian in general, this is really going to tell a story of the Mandalorian. Before, it was really just Grogu and Mando, or Din Djarin, as we found out the name to be, for the Mandalorian of choice that we follow on this journey. It's mainly just their thing of father and son thing, and him providing the life that he felt that one Mandalorian saved him from, but he was also a father figure that he never had, in a sense. And he was indoctrinated into very strict Mandalorian rules. So this would be nice to see the armorers mythology versus like the Night Owls. So I don't think any either or is better than the other. It's just a matter of guns and who shoots first and who does this. But they're going to band together at the end. But it'll be a huge war. It'll be a huge political thing. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, of course. There we go. See, that's some more Night Owl-like design. Uh, different colors. Okay, I had to take a momentarily pause, momentary pause, but let's get right back into it. Let's talk about the Night Owls, their origins, and how it's different. This seems more of like a Death Watch thing. He did have the Death Watch uh, symbol on his... Well, he has his own clan now with Grogu, but he, of course, Mandalorian is an offset of the Death Watch. But the Death Watch led by... Previous post was, I don't know, the name's weird in the beginning, but... It was, as we know, in the Clone Wars, he was a very warlike person. The Mandalorian to take Mandalore, the planet they're on, I believe, that has been destroyed due to a bunch of purges. The Duchess wanted to take a more reserved route because if she saw the Clone Wars, and why would they want to engage in it? Uh, Mandalorians are highly trained, and they could actually withstand Jedi because their armor Beskar is made to withstand the lightsaber. A lot of them died, though. Some of them have defeated Jedi, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, there's a thing in Legends where Jangle Fett, uh, I think he killed a bunch of Jedi with his bare hands. <laughs> And Mace Windu was amongst those Jedi. He didn't kill Mace Windu, obviously, because he showed up later. But it just shows, like, the training and everything. But, uh, yeah, okay, let's... It's a level playing field, really. The Mandalorian is, like, equal to the Jedi. But also the Jedi side, because Grogu is indoctrinated into the Mandalorian's beliefs. And also Mandalorian, he may not be Force-sensitive, but he has the Darksaber. Darksaber is a huge part of Mandalorian uh, beliefs and their system. So he is the rightful ruler as of this point. So it is what we're going to see, the, un the unition of the nation. And I'll bring you through it throughout the rest of And yeah, it's his Naboo starship. Another thing to bring up, ships this small shouldn't be able to have hyperspeed. It just 
you know, fast enough to look like hyperspeed. That what it was. That's what it was originally in the book of Boba Fett. But this is a more common thing thanks to uh, dude's name in Andor. I forgot his name. He was supposed to be a Jedi. I think he is still. Because he's like he gave to Andor a kyber crystal and he has a lightsaber safe thing. And his name is very similar to a, a, a canon Jedi in a book somewhere that survived. Luthen Royale. Something like that. But I think his name was definitely different, but he has a lot of Jedi artifacts. He has Sith holocrons. And they weren't found because he has Jedi holocrons too, so to balance it. They were huge though, compared to the actual ones in Rebels. This is off topic. Oh yeah, another guy to break sound too. I forgot to look into the VFX and everything. I think a lot of this is practical. This set, this could be the screen. The tree definitely isn't uh, the screen because the arms wrapped around it. Unless this whole thing's a screen, but I think uh, their take was it's still a puppet because puppets do look good. They did that for the Phantom Menace, I believe, and it didn't go well though for Yoda. But then they went the VFX one, so I think the puppet practical route is pretty cool. But I like how they mix the animatronics, the fake screen in the background. With the eye, sorry, something like that. Uh, it's copyrighted. It's the Lucasfilm technology, but yeah. I got pimped out on oh, 88 stack. Stormtrooper. IG88. The dead Stormtrooper. That is the robot in season one finale when he died when uh, Moff Garga. Moff Gideon. Yeah, Moff Gideon. Let's go with that name, okay? That's what I remember. He went in there and he tried to kill Mandalorian, and he was the owner of the Darksaber at that point. Now it's a huge cliffhanger at season one. And think about that. Season two was more than just a Darksaber. Season two, we saw Ahsoka. We freaking saw Luke. And we saw the Darksaber. We saw Moff Gideon try to kill himself because we saw Luke. Because, like, it's fucking Luke Skywalker. Who knows? We will see Palpatine this time. Not at all. Snoke would be around this time, so we probably might see some more about cloning Snoke. We did see that theme. But we probably will see Anakin in the temple. Or it could be a misdirect. And it could be cool to see in the temple. Maybe the new armor, who would that be for? I don't know. Maybe some Mandalorians need to be reindoctrinated into their faith and understand the weight that comes with being a Mandalorian. To understand that. Oh, I hope you like the shirt too. The armor. A really good fighter, and there actually was a theory before that she was a uh, broken talk, but apparently not. Broken doesn't age either. Obi Wan looks like shit when he aged. Broken didn't age a fucking day for years. Crazy, crazy. R five. Him on that crash. No, R five is. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. R four something, but he short circuited in a new hope. We saw him again here too. The cloner from the facility has a Camino patch, and now he's on Corson. We have a that was going to be very racist. That I wanted to say, I forgot. Where he's, Kim's convenience is the main. Yeah, and he has a new badge. These, some fallen Mandalorian parts, might be what they smelt down to rebuild. Oh, We're interrupting. This is a temple scene. The Anakin come in and just wipe all those Jedi out. But I doubt if it's Anakin that uh, he let Grogu live. Maybe Anakin didn't know about Grogu. That might be the whole thing. Maybe it's Jocasta New coming in to save Grogu because there is an arc later where Vader does kill Jocasta New. I like another theory where it was Quinlan Voss. That is interesting. Because we did see him reference in Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is cool. And he did a relation with Kenobi in Clone Wars. We saw, it's actually a, a, a move we saw Cal Kestis pick up later. One of his unique force abilities where he can read into anything that he touches. Like, see, if he touches the tab, he's like, some nerdy 18-year-old owned it or some shit. Well, it would be cool to see that side of the force and see him save Grogu. That would be a really cool story. Out of uh, that's actually a Mandalorian ship that they use in the Clone Wars, the Death Watch used. I forgot what it's called. Empire era stuff. One thing another got picked up: Star Wars Theory. Yeah, these are cool. The battles, right? They should be out of commission though. But uh, 
the original concept art by uh, Ralph McCoy, I believe. But yeah, the battle droids coming from the animation style onto this is cool, but also they were first appeared in... I believe it was a Phantom Menace. But anyways, when the ships are destroyed, their motherboards are destroyed, so their circuit shouldn't be working, so this one, these ones would, ha would have had to have been reprogrammed. But this is a bar where they go to power the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. dies, and then we have a uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he was one of the best parts of Roger Skywalker. He reprogrammed C three PO. That was freaking hilarious. Yeah, we're well, doing a more sleek thing. I don't know what species that is. It could be the snow creatures from the Clone Wars arc. Where okay, they were serving a general with the blue skin. George Lucas actually filled in with one of those people inside of uh, Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. George Lucas was one of the actors. Yeah, they did his makeup. But anyways, the whole point of the arc was to stop waging war with people who didn't deserve it because they were impending on their land. So pretty much they had to like meet them in the middle. But it shouldn't be them because their anatomy is very different. So... Yeah. All right, this has been Not real, like this is gonna be crazy. Like the stuff they're gonna show is gonna be ridiculous, uh, but uh, bleh, ridiculous. Like it's gonna be some next level stuff. Who knows what's gonna be in there? It's talking more Jedi stuff somehow. Uh, when you think that it's reached an all time high, like it's crazy. But also, I want to do a bit of like shameless promotion to show you like what is to come on my channel. There is, I didn't release uh, the follow up for this one. I did a Star of Killer thing, but I think I will do another Star Killer one sometime this week. We saw the good ending pretty much at the end where he, uh, it, uh, I think the bad ending could fit in there still because Vader did say, so long as she lives, I control you. So I could I could do something with that for sure. But yeah, really, Starkiller was fun to bring back in because I think it goes back to the truth, to like really like the, the whole thing of like their uh, holy trinity. It's not, I, it's, it's fandom, but they have the father, the son, the daughter. Anakin, because he killed them all, he'd be the new father in a sense, and he would have a daughter, Leia, and Luke, the son. But Starkiller was like a son to him as the dark side. The son was the embodiment of the dark side. And Ahsoka was the daughter, kind of, surrogate first one, from the light side, Anakin. So it's two different learnings, but it could be fit in there, and I like the idea of interacting with Luke. I don't know if I put that in here. Starkiller and Luke is a really important part, but I think this is just, yeah, this is just, so the ideology behind this was to build up Anakin as uh, the favorite to win the battle in the end. That was going to be the conclusion, so Anakin killing a bunch of Jedi. We see him kill Anakin, but I think the Anakin thing could be like a thing in his head. That's how I want you guys to interpret it, and yeah, it's the whole thing. It's like a battle of him realizing that, shit, I'm not, I'm not Anakin Skywalker. I'm not going to fall to the same things that he will. I will be free, and I will live my life, and I will not kill the woman I love. You know, that was, that's a huge thing for Starkiller, and that was Anakin's whole tragedy. But there will be a huge twist to, to the season. There will be stuff with Luke and his love interest. Mara Jade is coming in the show, yes. I was something really cool, I promise. It'll be sad. We'll see Luke have a huge break into the dark side and how Kylo Ren could be the most powerful Skywalker. He's quite literally like Vader without the handicap. Sure, he hasn't reached the potential yet, but he doesn't have the breathing apparatus. He has Skywalker blood, no breathing apparatus. So he's really just Luke if Luke went evil. So, I mean, and that's something I'm probably going to show Luke going evil. Because Mara Jade is a lot of stuff for that. So it should get fun. hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, please do smash that like button. And um, from now, it's been Power Guy from the Powerverse Production HQ. I'm Hoss Basement, what a loser. But uh, peace out and have a lovely day.